So the first fielding drill that we're going to do today is a real basic catch uh, and throw. And you're going to use a tennis ball and a brick wall, a fence wall. It's just something firm where you're going to get it back to you. If you're doing this in a pair with a sibling, a parent, um, ideal. So the idea is though, we're actually going to focus on the key elements. We're looking at a decent base, our head position and our hands. And I really want you to start registering how the ball is actually going into your hands. All right, think about it. If when you're uh, batting, you can kind of register if it's hit the middle of the bat. We're going to do the exact same today by using our hands. So a real simple drill, but the idea is it's going to be almost used as a warm up. We're going to be thinking about, you know, our body positions, where that ball's going in, what our balance is like and what it feels like. Challenge yourself to see how hard you can throw it. Go high, go low, go medium. And for the advancement, for the progression, start focusing about throwing to one hand only. So you're going to catch it with your left hand, catch it with your right hand, or even you can use multiple balls. All right. Now, this is a real basic and key drill. But if you think about what you're doing, it's a great engagement for your mind for other future drills. Another great catching drill is when you've got two surfaces that are quite hard, where you can kind of get an angle deflection. And the whole idea here isn't just about catching, but it's about staying low and reacting to how the ball's gonna misbehave. Uh, we can do this with a tennis ball, uh, a softball, a golf ball, anything really that can really uh, give you a different kind of feel and a different bounce and release from the, uh, from the surfaces, whether it be from the floor or from, in this case, the wall. So if we've got two surfaces like kind of pinned up at 90 degrees, we can bounce the ball in and really work on some, just some real basic ground fielding. So we're staying nice and low, our head's watching the ball the whole time. Or if we throw it a little bit higher, we can practice some low catching and some movement. So notice how there's not a lot of footwork going on here, but I'm really active and my body and my head is moving quite a lot. Okay, so the next draw that we wanna look at is actually attacking the ball and picking the ball up as if we were out in the outfield, whether that's inside the ring or attacking the ball from the boundary. Again, tennis ball, brick wall. What we're gonna to look to do is try and replace our back foot with where we're picking the ball up from. And if we're gonna try and really focus on getting our hands out in front of our body, all right, and not allowing that ball to come too close to us. So the ball's gonna come at you, and we're gonna pick it up and then replace. All right, so the ball comes, hands out in front, one, two, and we're set up to throw again. All right, ball comes back, we attack that ball, hands out, bang, and we're set to throw again. The reason why we don't wanna take that ball too close to our body is there's gonna be a lot of movement with our head going all the way into our hands and all the way out. All right, if we can keep our eye line and our hands and our head in front of our body, we can easily then be able to pick it up, set ourselves throwing towards our target and keeping our weight moving to where we want to throw. The natural progression when it comes onto a drill like that is attacking the ball, picking the ball up, and then releasing into our throw. Now we are limited, well I am especially, in, in, a, in a small back garden, however you've got to be creative. All right, what I've done here is kind of set up a, a scenario where I'm release, I'm taking the ball and I'm releasing it across my garden, and I've simply just put um, a little mat in behind to try and stop that ball from hitting a fence, from hitting a ball, then ricocheting off. So it's just going to kill, and it's just going to stop that sting of the ball from hitting. Uh, if you've got a net or you know a towel, a, a bed sheet, anything that's going to do just to try and kill that ball, and it's going to allow you then to practice your throwing a little bit more. But again, the key points of that is attacking the ball, getting your hands out in front, replacing that ball with your back foot to stabilize yourself, set that balance, and then release the ball towards your target. I like my fielding drills to be quite active, and I like to, to try and keep a little bit of fluidity going through, uh, going through some drills. And that's what I've tried to create with this next one. It's, it's encapsulating both the catching side of things and the throwing, and we can actually do that by just focusing on a small area when it comes to a brick wall and a tennis ball. Uh, to begin with, all I want you to do and think about is actually staying in a nice front-on position and you're just going to look to throw and hit a consistent target inside a hoop in this example, but you can actually just draw a chalk line or, or a square or just pin something on the wall to keep you focused on where you're throwing. And then you're just going to kind of experiment with either a conventional catching method or a reverse catching method. Now this way, again, we can kind of go back to the first drill and focus on how I'm catching it, what does my body naturally want to do, what do I want to kind of 
be position and shape that I want to be in when I'm taking these catches. And with the throwing side of things, this is just going to help loosen up uh, for, for other additional drills. But trying to, again, think about actually how you're releasing the ball with your hands, with your wrist positions, and even where your shoulder is when you're throwing it to try and take a little bit of pressure off that rotator cuff. Okay, so the progression for this drill can actually be going from a front on throwing action into a more traditional side on approach. But the front on again, we've kind of just highlighted that just to loosen up that arm before we go into a full on throw. The key for this is finding that base between the catch, the transition, and then the throw. If we're then, if we're catching or throwing from a, an indifferent or an unstable base, we're creating bad habits. And although, yes, this is a very uh, unique situation to be training in, we can still concentrate and focus on the key elements here, being the base and being our technical shape before we release or catch that ball. So the whole idea here now is I'm gonna throw at my first target, I'm gonna take my catch, I'm then gonna transition into another throw. Again, it's just creating a little bit more familiarity, a little bit more realism, even though that we're in an environment that is so far distant from what we're used to. Okay, so we're in here now. We're gonna take the original catch, catch, turn, and then I'm gonna throw into my next target. I don't wanna rush through this, all right? I really wanna focus and concentrate on my key shape, take my catch, transition, throw, making sure I'm hitting both of my targets, all right? So I catch, conventional, turn, throw, and split. Now what I can do is kind of test myself and put myself into a bit more of a pressurized situation. How fast can I get that ball from my hands into that target, all right? Trying to replicate a game situation. So the transition has got to be really quick, but my key elements and my key principles have to stay the same. So the ball comes into me, hit the catch, one, two, ah, release, and again, I'm always taking a harder catch from my second throw. What I found out in this situation for myself is I like taking more of a conventional style catch. So my fingers are pointing down on my first one, but then on my reaction when it's, when it's coming back off the, the house hoop, I'm actually taking a reverse one. And that's to do with the, my preference with height. And that's something that you could potentially be looking for when you're training and doing this drill. So one more time, the ball comes through. I take it conventional, I then take it in a reverse.